Welcome to another episode of Graphic Man. By now you've watched the previous video, which was an hour long walkthrough through parts of my house. And although some of you have been asking about uh, some of the materials that are behind me, I'll try to try to show some of them. It's, this is kind of like walkthrough part two, but not near as intense or as long. By the way, first I'll show you a photograph of Don Rosa. I got his autograph in Kansas City, Missouri a few years ago. Well, I guess many years ago at this point. Here he is signing uh, his poster, Tales, Tales from the Coop. And instead of picking up the camera and trying to walk around the room, which as you can saw, you saw from last episode, I was not very good at doing that. Uh, I've taken a series of just some photographs of kind of my workbench area where I do some woodworking. And uh, my son likes to do a lot of nice wood burning. And so I have a lot of the ordinary household tools and saws and knives and things of that sort. Here's a few shots of some of the books I have on the wall behind me. And, uh, of course, good old underdog is with us as always. But I want to get started on showing you some comics. I highly recommend you get some of these EC reprints. They, they are absolutely stunning. The, the colors in these, you just, you just can't beat them. They're really good. Highly recommend those. And don't worry, we're going to get to some Marvel. We'll start off with a little bit of DC, Secrets of Haunted House, number six. This is what everybody needs, a wooden stake when they go walking at night. You never know when that'll come in handy. In the Presence of Mine Enemies. This is my childhood copy. I actually read the, uh, the entire book that this was based on as well. Uh... Great little story. Prisoner of War during the Vietnam, the Vietnam War. Those of you Twilight Zone fans, from Gold Key, August 1976. This is Twilight Zone number 72. I'll try to get some better light on there. Great painted cover there. And I'd say it's in uh, fine condition. If you want to be real picky, very good plus, fine minus. Superboy, number 121, from June 1965. Superboy gets to meet his father. Kind of a unique story. Uh, he never thought he'd get to meet his father. He actually does. And he keeps it secret of who he is. Don't know if you're uh, dating and titling a lot of your books here you make notice uh, we have a centerfold that's loose uh, otherwise good condition and you do that for if something ever happens to you your loved ones can sell these and uh, no one will accuse your loved ones of trying to rip them off making this look like it's a, a very fine plus when when it has a centerfold loose so try to put notes on your books that's just a it's not a very pleasant thought, but anyway, Superboy 138, this is a giant size. And it's from May or June of 1967. And it's got great stories in it. I'll show you the whole cover. Basically, any Superboy book that has crypto on it, I just, I just don't want to pass up. Top Cat. Top Cat from Gold Key, number 15, July 1965. Not to be confused with Top Dog, that's something totally else. Here's Superboy, what number is this? 141. Needs to be in a better holder than this. Tarzan. Number 42 from Dell. Now I have some uh, scans of this. The back cover is a Wheaties ad 
of Sid Abel. He played for the Chicago Blackhawks. It also has a Daisy Air Rifle advertisement and an advertisement to join the Dell Comics Club and you get a free keychain of a dog in a doghouse. Had I been alive back then, I definitely would have joined this Dell Comics Club. Here is Weird Mystery Tales number six. This cover is fabulous. Take a look at that dog. There's something extra creepy about seeing little children and an innocent dog having to encounter something like this type of ghost here. That's a beautiful cover. Next up, a Weird Mystery Tales, number 11. Great colors on this one. I don't know how many times uh, you've picked up any hitchhikers, but uh, this might be a good day to quit that activity. Weird Mystery Tales number 12. My copy is well loved. Sometimes a cover may not have anything to do with the story inside, but this one does. In this story, the wife uses her knowledge of taxidermy to keep her old husband around. We at the Graphic Man Institute are in favor of preservation. And around this time, DC Comics started showing small pictures of the books that were on sale that month. The titles would be in color, but the artwork for the cover would be black and white. Being a mostly Marvel fan back in the 1970s, I would get the occasional DC comic, and I would stare at these ads wondering if I should start getting these books. And I wish I had. Here's Weird Mystery Tales number 13. There's nothing like making a grand entrance. This cover art is by Luis Dominguez. And I really used to stare at this page of ads, especially the ad for Our Fighting Forces, number 150. I really wanted that book. The very idea that you had to remain perfectly still and play dead so you wouldn't get shot by the enemy. And yet here comes a snake. Ah, up next, here's a treat. Happy Rabbit. Happy Rabbit, number 45, from Standard Comics. I don't think anyone on the internet is talking about standard comics, but they ought to. They had a lot of great titles. This one is from October 1951. Although this is a gag cover, they actually took the time to make a story about the image. And they even subtitled it, The Story Behind the Cover. Here's Smokey Bear number 11. And these boys are doing the impossible. There's no way they could lift this pool if it were full of water. Did you ever fill up a children's swimming pool only to have your wife say, you should move the pool over here? There's no way. But you need to get your hands on this book. It teaches children what's wrong with the world. There's a property owner who rents out his property to the Coyote Brothers. And this rental property is in bad shape. Smokey the Bear suggests that the owner fix up the place and make some repairs. But the owner says, no way. If he fixed up his place, his property taxes would increase. Since the Coyote Brothers can't pay the rent, they have to leave. So in their small way of trying to pay back the owner, they decide to fix up the place and do repairs themselves. Only to have the owner tell them to stop. Because if the tax man comes by and sees that the property is in better shape, the taxes will increase. So back in the 1970s, children learned that our tax system is responsible for people having crummy neighbors that don't take care of their property and that taxes are too high. What a valuable lesson. If only, if only kids learn that today. Up next is a great Tom and Jerry from Dell. Dell. 
This is uh, Tom and Jerry number 118 from May of 1954. And this Dell comic is more than likely a Canadian edition. The reason I say that is, the inside cover is blank. Here's a scan to show what I'm talking about. It seems like Canadian editions of Dell Comics didn't have any printing on the inside covers. Although I'm not too sure why that is. I suspect it had to do with advertising, but if you know the answer, then feel free to let me know. On the back cover is a Wheaties advertisement starring Roy Campanella from the Brooklyn Dodgers. This is three years, of course, before the Dodgers moved to Los Angeles. And here's Tom and Jerry, number 305, from April 1978. It has great artwork, especially if you like drawings of pancakes. Now, you might roll your eyes, but somebody had to draw all those little tiny lines representing pancakes. That would take me half an hour. We'll move fast through some of these. Here's Turok, number 73. It's from April 1971. Here's a, another great Turok book. i got to put these in better bags. Here's Turok, number 105. It's from September of 1976. The Black Hole, number one. Walt Disney. Speaking of Walt Disney, we'll do three Walt Disney comics and stories in a row. From my childhood, it's well read, number 167. They're going to get that bug. There's Walt Disney comics and stories, number 319. April of 1967. Boys are doing a little detective work. And when you want to dress up like a detective, it's Walt Disney Comics and Stories 291. And here's a beauty. Walt Disney Comics and Stories number 377. From February 1972. Now we're going to make Literature Lad happy. Here is Classics Illustrated number 10 and number 10. Both of them painted covers. And they're both later editions. Here's how you can tell them apart. Here's the 11th edition from 1956. What you do is you consult the back cover and you find the last reorder number of issues they still produced. In this case, the highest reorder number was issue number 130. And you'll see that I've uh, red circled that. That's not on my book. I've done that for the scan here. And when you look it up, you will discover that this is the 11th edition based upon that reorder number. Here's a peek at what the interior art looked like. And here's the 21st edition. Here on the back cover, we find the highest reorder number is number 169. So that was one of their later editions. This edition was printed in 1970. Classics Illustrated lasted a long time, reprinting a lot of these stories over and over and over again. Usually they just kept printing the same story and artwork every year, which made it difficult to determine just what edition you had in your hands and what year it was from. This edition, however, went ahead and used different interior artwork, in this case from Sam Citron. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And now we're going to make you real happy. We're going to show a bunch of Thors. Here's Thor number 151. Front cover by Jack Kirby from April 1968. This one contains a splash page of Odin. If you haven't seen my Tales of Asgard video, you should right away. And instead of the usual Tales of Asgard backup story, this book has an Inhumans story. Up next is 152 
from May 1968 by Jack Kirby. And this issue's backup story concludes the previous Inhumans story. Here's number 154 from June 1968. And this cover is beautiful. Notice how the background is constructed of numerous images. I'll zoom in a little so you can see more detail. I often wonder what it would have looked like had Kirby not placed Thor right in the middle. But you have to admit that the green tone background helps make our main character pop right out of the image. And Kirby wasn't done just yet. Inside is a great splash page of Mangog. Just look at those teeth. And it has some great offer for some t-shirts for only $1.60. Then we have another Thor. There's going to be a lot of Thors here. This is number 155. From August 1968. And there's barely any room for Thor to be on the cover. Here's page one splash of our hero. Another splash page of Mangog. And of course, while all this is going on, Odin manages to catch yet another power nap. As I pointed out in an earlier video, everyone has lengthy conversations right in Odin's bedchamber. Here's Thor 161. Not in the best condition, but it's Jack Kirby, and it's got Thor and Galactus on the same cover. You can't go wrong. Number 167. Looks like Loki's in charge. We'll skip ahead to uh, 169. Just look at that artwork in blue tone. This is from October of 1969. Here's the page one splash page. We get a break from Vince Coletta inking for a change, and this time it's George Klein. Sadly, George Klein died shortly after inking this issue. Here's page five. And more Kirby artwork at his finest. All right, here's Thor number 170. Number 171 versus The Wrecker. The inker is Bill Everett on this issue. Here's number 173. A absolutely great cover. Here's an ad advertisement out of it. I remember trying to get all these helmets out of the bubblegum machines back then. All right, to save time, we'll just go through these fairly fast. Thor number 176. Number 178. This is The Stranger and The Abomination from July 1970. Uh-oh, it's Doctor Doom in number 182. And, of course, you have to have the conclusion to that story in number 183. I'll try to get in tight there on Dr. Doom. Outstanding cover. I love covers with giants on them. Number 184, January 1971. Thor number 186.
Number 189, she's back. It's always a great cover when somebody is walking on air. Number 191. This one's from August of 1971. Nothing like Bronze Age Thor's. Number 192. Check out the costume the Demolisher has. Would you go outside wearing that? I don't think I would. Oh, this one has a rough spine. It's number 195, but still reads just fine. January 1972. We're skipping around a little bit. Another one's had a, it's seen better days, number 196. But I am a sucker for those giants. Number 199, they're building up to number 200 here. Oh, and this one breaks my heart. Number 200. This was in almost perfect condition. And then one day my wife's cat decided to take a little love nibble bite right here. We don't have that cat anymore. Not because of that. We, things happen. You know. Thor number 201. This, to me, always looked like a DC cover. I think it's just because of the stance or the kooky pose they put in. Thor 202. Ego Prime. Number 203. And 204. This one to me looks like a Conan the Barbarian cover. I think it was Bisima. Uh, any book that has the Absorbing Man in it, 206. The Absorbing Man is a fantastic villain, and they should have used him more. Maybe they knew what they were doing. They didn't overuse him. That's for sure. Thor 207. It looks like Gil Kane artwork, and I, I'm sorry. I know there's some Gil Kane fans in the audience, but uh, I, I think Gil Kane was best suited for Spider-Man. I, I really like the way he drew Spider-Man's mask. Uh, and I just think I would have liked him to stay there. Maybe not on Thor. Uh, great, a tremendous artist. I, this is, uh, by the way, number 209 from March of 1973. I'm not trying to diminish Gil Kane's quality. Just sometimes you'd rather see him on something else. Thor number 210. April 1973, John Buscema, Thor number 211 by John Buscema, and as a kid I always pronounced it Buscema, and then one day I watched that video with Stan Lee and John Buscema and called How to Draw, Car uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, which now no one does for Marvel, but... Uh, and Stan kept calling him John uh, Busima or Busima. And uh, John didn't correct him. Here's number 212, June 1973, 214, August 1973. It's a pretty good cover here, number 215. That giant hand is going to get you. Number 216. 
Hey, some of these run some of these are in a row. Ah, we'll stop that, number 218. We're not going to put in number 217. Are you kidding? And that's it. Hope you, uh, hope you liked looking through some of those. And uh, the artwork on those were fantastic. Always like to throw in a little mix of comics, not just Marvel, DC, Gold Key, Classics Illustrated, you name it. So, as always, happy drawing.